Okay, so hopefully this is going to come through. Uh, if someone in the chat room could tell me whether the sound is coming through okay, okay, that would be great because I've had a little bit of a nightmare so far with this stream. So um, can I get a thumbs up uh, in the chat if this is actually working? Ooh, thank you, Matthias. Um, so the issue that I had uh, just before this stream started, as some of you might have seen on uh, Twitter, is that Windows 10 decided that now would be an, an opportune moment to get me to do an install of a new Windows update. Um, the options that I, were give, I was given were do the install now or do the install in one hour's time. So I opted to go for the now, which was about 25 minutes past seven. And uh, it's literally, literally just this second uh, come back to life. So I've had time to fire up my VM, which you can now see in behind me, uh, open OBS and uh, click record and click start streaming. So um, this might go well and it might go very bad. So let's just get started, shall we? Um, so I see Matthias in the chat room who's got some new emotes. I think I've called that correctly. Um, I've got no real, real real idea what an emote is other than an icon like that he's showing there. I don't know how he gets them. I don't know if I want them. Uh, I would be I'd be grateful if you could uh, maybe provide some more information, uh, Matthias, about exactly what an emote is uh, and uh, how I could get some, because I think I would like some. But anyway, for this evening's talk, it's not really a talk, I'm actually going to try and do some ad hoc coding tonight. This is something I've sort of flirted with in previous uh, streams that I've done. Uh, in the previous streams, I've kind of had a rough idea about what I wanted to achieve uh, for the evening stream, uh, and I've I've maybe done a Blue Peter style uh, creating some code beforehand, but this time around, I've I've done little to no preparation. I I I have an idea of what I want to achieve, uh, and I'm going to work towards it. So the idea is that in this stream, and most likely into next week. Uh, to carry on with that and try and get something working. Uh, hello, Jan, uh, in the chat room. Uh, good to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, so, what what is it I want to do? So, let's let's talk about that. So, the first thing I want to do is I want to do a Choco install of an application called uh, Markdown Monster. So, Markdown Monster is a great application, right? It's a great name. The name of it kind of gives it away. It is uh, for writing Markdown and having that uh, an editor, an IDE, essentially, for specifically for creating Markdown, right? It's written by uh, a guy called Rick Strahl. Uh, it's very good at what it does. Um, I think I'm right in saying, Jan, uh, you can correct me in the chat room, that it's a WPF application and it makes use of uh, Mat Apps, which is a, a library for uh, when you're when you're creating a WPF application, Mat Apps brings a lot of functionality to the table in terms of uh, styles and uh, controls and lots of things that you'd want to um, add into your WPF application. So yes, uh, uh, Markdown Monster uses Mat Apps and it's uh, WPF app. So if I open up Markdown Monster, I've been a long-term user of Markdown Monster. Absolutely love it, right? So why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you all of this because my predominant machine now uh, is a Mac. I, I'm, I'm on Windows on my Mac, but I'm not on Windows full time anymore. Now the problem with that is I can't use Markdown Monster, or, or rather, more specifically, in order to use Markdown Monster for writing my uh, uh, Markdown files, my blog, for example, is, is written in Markdown, I would have to fire up the VM, um, open up Markdown Monster, and, and make use of it. Now that's not impossible but it's just not as nice as having something on my mac now as a result of that and various other things um some of you might know my main application for doing a lot of stuff now is 
Visual Studio Code. So if I were to go into Visual Studio Code, then it has some markdown functionality. So I can create a new markdown file and I can have it rendered uh, live in the uh, application. And I can have it, there's markdown linting that you can do. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do within Visual Studio Code. And, it's, and again, it's very good at what it does. However, one of the, one of, I'm going to call it a killer function. I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a killer function, but it's certainly a, a nice function that I like within Visual Studio, within Markdown Monster is if I create a, um, it's twofold. And I won't be able to show you it in this newly create, newly uh, running version of Markdown Monster because it actually involves installing a number of plugins uh, that uh, Markdown Monster has. But what you can do is you can say, uh, grab a screenshot. So it will actually fire up uh, an external uh, editor, uh, for example, um, Snagit. Uh, so from Markdown Monster, I can say, grab screenshot. Uh, it will fire up Snagit. Snagit will take the screenshot. I'll then be able to edit that uh, what it's got as its image in Snagit. So I can add arrows, I can add text, and yada, yada, yada. And then I can close Snagit. And then what was uh, in the Snagit window is now available in my clipboard, right? And from there, I can then say, go to uh, Azure uh, Storage and take that image and store it in Azure Storage. And then what I get back from that is uh, uh, the correct markdown syntax. So for example, uh, this one, no, not that one, uh, this one here, Th this syntax here, which is the image that was on my clipboard, sent up to Azure Storage, come back with an actual URL for where it actually lives now in Azure Storage, and then it will give me the markdown syntax that, um, that, that, will, that will make it available in my markdown file. So all of that is a really really useful workflow because right now what i'm having to do is i'm having to uh, spin up azure storage explorer i'm having to grab the screenshot save it to my file system uh, go into azure storage explorer uh, upload the file uh, into somewhere uh, figure out what the url is and then take it and stick it into visual studio code so this uh, extension that i want to create is an extension that will do not all of that because i'm <laughs> I'm certainly not expecting to be able to, from Visual Studio Code, uh, spin up Snagit, uh, interact with Snagit, uh, do all of it, handshaking it needs to do. No, no, no. I'm not expecting to have to do that part. But what I would like to be able to do is I would like to be able to get an image onto my clipboard, uh, my Windows clipboard, uh, or, or my Mac clipboard. And I would like to be able to uh, run a command within Visual Studio Code to grab the image from that clipboard take it to uh, Azure Storage, drop it into there, generate a URL, and then make, put that URL into the current uh, window that I have active on my machine. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So one of the first questions that I have for the people in the chat room is, what should this thing be called? Because I need a name for this thing. Um, now, I haven't given any thought as to what it should actually be called. Um, but I'm putting it out there for if anyone has any suggestions about uh, what this application, this extension should be installed, now is the time to to put those ideas forward and we can we, we can have a vote on it in the chat room. Uh, so Matthias has just suggested uh, at least one thing there. So um, awesome. Uh, so as, as Ming or as image uh, uh, from Matthias. So I'm assuming that's a play on Azure, obviously, and image, uh, which makes it amazing, I'm going to guess. Uh, and Maurice has said, uh, awesome image uploader VS Code. That That's certainly possible. Um, so I'm going to let those flow through. <laughs> oh, there's Jeffrey. I'm thinking, oh man, I'm getting graced by royalty now in the chat room here. Uh, so Jeff's just uh, joined the chat as well. Hello, Jeff. Uh, welcome to the welcome to my stream, uh, uh, and uh, Manfred suggesting maybe a more generic solution uh, that will. Allow, so that was my thinking as well. So I didn't necessarily want to tie myself to specifically to Azure. Uh, so something like uh, as image or as Ming uh, that uh, Matthias suggested uh, would would potentially limit me to that. So um, in this first iteration of this uh, extension that we're going to create, 
I'm not ex I'm not planning on having any more than just the Azure upload. Uh, but certainly you're right, uh, Manfred. It, it could ultimately go to OneDrive or to go to Dropbox or, or go to uh, any sort of cloud storage. Uh, it, my blog, so from a purely uh, selfish perspective, because um, that's typically where some of these extensions or these ideas come from, uh, my blog is hosted on um, GitHub Pages and the... Uh, the images for my blog come from an Azure CDN. So from a first pass uh, of this extension, uh, almost certainly that's the only one that's going to be working out of the box. Now that might obviously change, but that's certainly not my um, priority. So where do we start? Gary's image grabber. I like that. I like that. Um, that's not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so again, uh, uh, so some some very uh, some very uh, nice people have, have joined in uh, the chat room here. So I'm, I'm very glad to to welcome you onto the stream. Uh, C sharp Fritz, uh, welcome. Thank you very much for dropping in. Image Downer, mm, that could be Image Monster. Yes. So uh, I'm not sure on that one. But uh, I'm, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let them flow in, and I'm gonna talk about what we need to do to start uh, creating this extension. So where we're gonna start is I'm gonna go up to here, and I'm going to go to the Visual Studio Code Marketplace. So the, the Visual Studio Mar Code Marketplace is the end result. It's where we want our extensions to go, right? So if I do a search in here for uh, Choco, then we'll find my Visual Studio Code extension for Chocolatey uh, in there. So we look under uh, me as a publisher, then I've actually got four extensions. So I, I, I'm, I, I think I've got a problem. Um, this will be my fifth uh, Visual Studio Code extension that we're away to create here. But each one of them have kind of served a purpose, a, a selfish, pub, a selfish uh, uh, purpose uh, specifically for what I want to achieve. So uh, cake.recipe extension is purely for making my life easier when I create a cake uh, recipe uh, add-in. Uh, CICD assets is the exact same thing. Uh, I found I was uh, copying and pasting the same uh, files when I was creating a uh, GitHub uh, a, a repository. So the CICD assets extension is purely for making that easier. Uh, and the chocolate extension, uh, which is probably the uh, it, well, it's my, the, the most popular one that I've got, is uh, for making the creation of chocolate packages uh, that bit easier. Um, rather than doing things from the command line, you can do it from within Visual Studio Code. So what we want to do is we want to put something up into there. So what we want to do is we want to create the scaffolding for a, a new extension, right? So that is done using... Uh, the easiest way of doing that is using a thing called uh, Yeoman, right? Now, I don't, so let, let's let's back up a step. Uh, I've tried to make this uh, as hard as possible for me uh, in the stream. So I've literally got nothing on this VM. This VM has got uh, chocolatey installed and it's got VS Code installed, but it's got very little else. So what we actually need to do is we need to get all of the parts downloaded uh, and and then put onto the machine so that we can um, start doing what we need to do. So uh, to that end, uh, we're going to do choco install uh, node js. So uh, in order to um, so Visual Studio Code extensions are written uh, predominantly in uh, TypeScript, um, and in order to do any sort of TypeScript development, it uses a uh, npm package.json file to describe that. Uh, extension. So in order to do all of those things, uh, well, you could call it that if you want to, Jeffrey. But I mean, this is this is literally how I um, this is literally how I uh, would bring my environment up to um, what I want to do. So this is how I'm going to do it. Um, so on this machine, we have nothing installed. We've now got npm installed, uh, or we've now got Node.js installed. So that should bring with it uh, the npm. Uh, the node package manager, which we can use to install Yeoman. So the uh, package manager exception at this point, we've installed Chocolatey uh, to install Node, to install NPM, and then from there we can then install the other utility tools we want to use. Um, the reason that NPM hasn't worked is because I need to refresh my uh, PowerShell session because uh, the installation of Node 
the installation of Node uh, added a new uh, entry into the path variable. So as a result of that, uh, npm uh, wasn't there. So I'm going to do npm now. So having refreshed my PowerShell session, I've now got npm. Uh, so in theory now, I should be able to do npm uh, install minus g, and I'm going to guess that it's yo, but it could be yeoman. Let's find out. Let's see if that works. And with yeoman installed, we can then use the uh, yeoman generator to scaffold us out a new Visual Studio Code extension. So let's just see, uh, while that's doing that, let's have a quick look and see some of these other suggestions for the name of this extension. Um, image Downer from Mateus, uh, Gary's Image Upper, uh, Gupper, <laughs> see what you did there, Maurice, that could be interesting. Uh, Markdown Image Snapper, possibly. Uh, clip Image, Clip Image, Clip Image, plus, well, that could be it. Pick Up from Stephen, uh, could well be any one of those. Um, uh, and Manfred there saying, uh, we've waited ages to get Windows as easy to set as Linux boxes. Don't spoil it. <laughs> well, fair point. Uh, just wait until you... Yeah, I've seen you talk about Nixos or NixOS, uh, Jeffrey. I, I, I genuinely don't know what that is. Um, but uh, it sounds like you like it. So, oh, now we're getting into uh, Linux discussions. I'm, I'm out then. I, I, I don't know too much about that. Um, so, we've, we've now got the Yeoman installed. Uh, we're currently looking for ways to make Yeoman better. I'm going to say no to that. Uh, this is a throwaway VM, so there's there's not much point in uh, adding that into the mix. Uh, so we need to install a generator. Now, I'm going to search npm for generators, and I'm going to hope that there's one called uh, VS Code. Let's see what that comes back with. Because I can't actually remember the name of it. Uh, search again. No. Okay, so we're going to have to find out what the Yeoman generator for VS Code is. So yo generator for VS Code. I know there is one, I just can't remember the name of it. So first extension is generator code, so that's what we want. So we want to do an npm install globally of the generator code. So let's do that. So let's just control C out with that. And we're going to do npm install minus G for, I've got an extra O there. So generator code. Can't see the left of your posh window. Something's in, <laughs> that might be me. Uh, let's see if we can make this a little bit smaller. I up, up, I I up the font size so it would come through clearly on the stream. So let's see if we can make this a little bit smaller. Above my head. How's that Maurice? Hopefully you can see that. So now, if I cd into my, uh, where I keep all my GitHub stuff, so I'm going to cd into uh, GitHub 13. So now we need to create a repository. We need to create a repository on GitHub, which is where we're going to house everything. Uh, so let's have a look over here. So based on um, what I saw, I'm going to go with clip image as I think it's still just as big. <laughs> yeah, You're a cheeky little man there. Uh, yes, I've got no words for you. Um, I'm going to create a new repository up here, and I'm going to I'm going to go with clip image. I I think that's a good one. So clip image, and the kind of the convention that I followed uh, for my other extensions is I've been putting uh, VS Code at the end of it. Um, I think I borrowed that uh, originally from the Cake project, where we added a Cake extension for Visual Studio Code. Um, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to go with uh, Clip Image VS Code. I'm going to make it public. I'm going to. I won't necessarily add a README. Just yeah, I'll add a README. It's got nothing in it, and this code, like most of the stuff I create, is going to be MIT. So let's just add that in, and we'll go ahead and create that repository. Uh, so with that created, I can then clone that repository locally onto this machine. So let's do a git clone of that. And with that done, let's cd into uh, clip image, VS code, and we're obviously on the master branch. 
we're going to come to that, Maurice. So one of the comments in the chat room is, uh, no, wh why did I not add Dependabot? That will come. Uh, for now, we'll just set up the basic framework, and I will add in Dependabot after that. Uh, so now we're on, uh, we're in Git, and we, we know we're on the master branch. So my convention for most things is to add a develop branch. I typically follow Git flow for everything that I do. Uh, there's lots of debate about whether you should or you shouldn't. Uh, I'm not going to get into that just now. Uh, that's for a different day. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, be on the develop branch, and I'm going to push that up to the repository that I have. So I'm just going to push that up. And then the one thing I will do in uh, GitHub is oh, I'm going to need to log in. That's probably a good thing to do. Um, Let's go down here. I'm going to try and find my password. Uh, what I might do is I might just do this. I'll be back in a second. I'll see you on the other side once I have uh, put in my password details. So just give me a minute. Okay, so I put in my password details, uh, which hopefully you never saw, so that's good. Uh, if I go back to GitHub and I go into my settings now, I should be able to see that there is a develop branch, and I'm going to make that the default one. So that's just, again, that's just a convention that I use. Uh, so I've now got a develop branch. Now, with that in play, if I go over to here, and then do yo code, I think we should be able to stub out the uh, scaffolding for my extension. So obviously, uh, for those that you don't know, uh, this is uh, Yeoman, uh, and what you get uh, is a interactive uh, menu structure that you can uh, step through the various options that come in this particular Yeoman generator. So for this one, we have uh, lots of options we have whether we're creating a color screen, a color theme, language support, code snippets, key mapping. Uh, but what we're interested in creating is uh, an extension. So the extension can either scaffold you out a raw uh, a JavaScript uh, extension or a TypeScript one. Now, choco paste password. Uh, absolutely, we could do that. Uh, Okay, thank you very much for joining us uh, there, Jeff. Uh, hope you have fun in Australia. <laughs> um, the, uh, the the extensions I've created today have all been in TypeScript. Um, TypeScript brings with it the ability to do uh, kind of uh, first level uh, compilation of the, the, the code that you're creating rather than uh, f only finding the errors at runtime. So I'm going to create an extension uh, using the TypeScript uh, scaffolder. So I'm just going to hit enter there. And what is the name of your extension? So we're going to call it, um, I think, or I'm just going to quickly check something, that I'm going to give it the same name as I've used to date. So let's just go in here and have a quick look at the uh, Chocolate VS Code extension. Um, and I'm trying to remember if, that name, the name that it's looking for there, is the name that goes into the package.json file. So it's this one here. So yes, I'm going to call, I'm going to give it the name, which matches what I've already put as the repository name. So I said it was clip image uh, VS code is the name. What is the identifier for your extension? I'm going to go with clip image VS code again. And what's the description of your extension? Amazing clipboard image uploader. Um, what is the description of your extension? Um, extension that provides the ability to upload image from clipboard to Azure, 
to online let, let's just call it what it is to start with to azure storage because we're, we're gonna we're gonna limit the scope of the extension initially uh, and then we can go from there initialize with a git repository um initialize a git repository no because we're already in a git repository so we shouldn't need to do that so i'm going to say no to that uh which package manager do you want to use uh npm or yarn so this is a hot topic as well. My understanding uh, from a previous uh, from a previous stream that I did is that Yarn is quicker. Uh, npm is what I know though, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with npm, and it's gonna go and do its stuff. So what that's gonna scaffold out for us is all of the files that we need to make an extension work. Okay, so. Let's just wait for that to finish and then let's go into Visual Studio Code and see what we've got. So, okay, so it hasn't quite done what I wanted. Um, it's put everything within a folder called VS Code, which is not really what I wanted. So I'm just going to go and change that slightly. So let's go into C, GitHub, GEP13, Clip Image VS Code, and I'm going to take all of this stuff from here. And I'm going to put it up into the top level, and it says it's what. That's fine because it must have generated something in the README. Okay, so with that done, I've now got the folder structure that I want. Move to source. Uh, I'm not going to do that, Matthias, and I'll come back to why in a minute. Uh, so now, over here, uh, well, I'll change this because this is a fresh install as well. Let's change the color theme to be light, which I think, my understanding is the light theme comes through better on the stream uh, or on video. So I'm gonna enable the light theme here and then let's just make it a little bit bigger. <coughs> so what we've got is, uh, yeah, we've got everything that we want here, I think. Let's just have a quick sanity check just to make sure that everything looks like it's in the right place. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to take that as one vote for not the light theme uh, from Mateus there, but I'm going to leave it as the light theme because, like I say, I think it comes better. Uh, it certainly comes better. It comes through better when you're presenting uh, through a projector. So I'm going to go with the assumption that it's better uh, in this context as well. So with that in play, in theory, I should be able to hit F5 here, and this is either going to work first time or it's it's going to fail and we're, we'll we'll figure out exactly which one it falls into but what this should do is this should spin up the uh, extension development host with this templated or scaffolded out extension ready for us to play with right now the scaffolded extension doesn't actually do very much at all i think if i remember correctly it adds in uh one uh, adds in uh, one command uh, into the command palette and that's it um, so let's just see if we can get this to spin up uh, the extensions that are being added in here are most likely due to the um, uh, extensions that i've already got installed so it's downloading some things for uh, omnisharp and dotnet core tooling and that sort of stuff um, so it didn't work and i suspect that it's because well no it maybe did work so let's see what we've got here. Uh, and then if I run this, is there a hello world command? Yeah, there is. Okay, so this hello world command here is the one that's been added as part of the scaffolding. So this one is simply adding a, a message to the output window. So we can look at where that's uh, done. If we go over here and look at the package.json file, then the package.json file uh, it has this part here. So this is the what this extension is bringing to the table. What is it contributing into Visual Studio Code? So what this is contributing is a single command that has the command name of extension dot hello world, uh, and it's got a title of hello world. So the way that that's hooked up into the executing context of Visual Studio Code is on this activation events. So what we're saying here is when the command uh, extension hello world is called activate my extension 
Okay, so to say that differently, so now that we've seen this, if I hit F5 again and run the extension development host, then if I, my extension at this point hasn't actually been activated, but if I click the hello world command from the command palette, that's at that point the extension is activated and then the output is whatever the extension has been told to do. So in this case, like I say, it's just to show a, a message to the console or a message to the output. So if we look in the source of the extension.ts, what we'll see here is here's the activate function and it is, what is it? What is I'm trying to show here? Oh, hold on, that's not what I want to do. What am I doing there? Let's close this, make this a bit smaller. So here we are registering a command called extension.hello world. So that's a name that we had in the package.json file. And then from there, we're doing something. And that something is to show an information method with just hello world. So let's just change this slightly and say hello, kep13 stream, just to show this working. And again, if we run F5 with the extension development host, then when we run the hello world command, we should get hello get 15 stream. Okay, so that's where the hookup, that's where all the interaction points is happening. Okay, so everything is defined in the package.json file. And then in the uh, entry point that is the extension.ts, and that was that was in the uh, package.json file as well. Um, this is where the entry point is defined. So you can call that whatever you want. You can call, call that a file uh, bob.js. As long as that is uh, defined in the main entry point here, that's where it will look for the activation events. And then from there, you can have uh, as many or as little um, uh, files going forward from there. Okay? So, now that we've got the scaffolding in place, the most important thing that we need to do now is to find an icon for our extension because it doesn't really matter what the actual functionality of the application or the extension is doing but we need an we need a we need an icon that's the most important thing that we need so if we go up to our web browser and we look at the uh, uh, website called the noun project the noun project is a great place where you can find icons that you can use for free or you can choose to purchase them as well right so what i the one thing i did do before the stream started was i went to the noun project and i searched for an icon that i thought would be uh, good to have and i did the exact same thing when it came to this uh, cicd uh, extension that i created before this icon comes from the noun project i always like the wee dog <laughs> what wee dog Am I missing something about the wee dog? Uh, Bottle Blonde Scott. Um, not sure where the wee dog's coming into this, but... Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Clippy from uh, Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel and the wee dog. I absolutely agree. I always change it to be the wee dog as opposed to Mr. Clippy. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, so the Nine Project, uh, like I say, that's where I got my CICD assets uh, icon here. Now, if I had been using uh, the Nine Project's the free version of the Nine Project, I would have had to give attribution of that icon for this usage. Now, you can see that in play if I go over here and go to another project that I've been I've worked on in the past called Git version. So Git version uh, uses uh, an icon, this icon, which also comes from the Nine Project. But in order to use that icon, there is uh, attribution done down at the bottom of the readme.here to say that that icon comes from a gentleman called David Chapman uh, from the Nine Project. Now, what I did with the CICD assets icon was I paid for it. So that means I don't have to attribute it. Now, the cost of the icon was like $2.99. So it's not a, a huge amount of money. So I opted to, um, to purchase it. So if I go ahead and log in, to this account, so I'll do, I'll just be back in a second again.
So now what we should see is uh, within my kits, uh, you have the option of saving them. So this this is an icon. This is the icon that I purchased before. So if I needed to, I could download it again. Uh, but I have uh, royalty free usage of that icon. Now what I did do is if I go back to my kit again, is I had found this one. So this is one I thought would be a sensible icon for this extension that I tried to create. So it's an image with an upload icon. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, this is the one that we're going to use. Okay. So I'm going to download a uh, 512 by 512 version of that PNG. And that's the one that I will be able to use within my uh, extension. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to create a folder called, I would suggest one with color. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I'm going to create an images folder. I like to have some sort of level of consistency between all of these things. So I know where to find things. So I'm just going to create a folder called images and into that I'm going to place one called, uh, that's probably a bad one to look at. Let's go to my CICD assets one. Confirm what I did there. So CICD, hmm? CICD, VS Code, and I'm going to go images, <coughs> and I just called it CICD. So we'll just we'll call it clip image. So into that folder, I'm going to paste my icon, and into there, I'm going to call it clip image.png. So what we can do now within our package.json file is we have the option of adding that as a um, adding that as a property within my package.json file. So I'm going to put this up here. Again, you guys and girls won't necessarily be able to see what I'm up to now, but I have stuff happening on another window. So if I go up to here, uh, and Maurice, the the reason I haven't chosen one with color, I'm not saying that we're not going to do that, but um, again, from a consistency point of view, I, I'll probably keep things the same uh, in the sense that um, I maybe won't have color, but I'm open to the idea. Um, I don't want to do that. Control F and then PNG. Okay. So right up here, I'm going to put in an uh, icon and then I'm just going to give it the path to where I put that. So in here, I've got clip image.png and then here, comma at the end of it. So that's obviously, yes, cho <coughs> chocolate and cake do have color. Um, what I meant by the consistency is in the ones that are, I guess, my extensions that are not tied to a specific project, uh, I've opted just to go with this kind of uh, kind of blue color in the background and um, a, a plain black icon. So again, it's not necessarily the um, it doesn't need to be <laughs> done right now. Uh, but for now, I'm going to make it the same just from a, a consistency point of view. So with that in mind, there's a couple of things I want to bring in here. So the first is uh, this. So as part of, uh, along with the icon, I'm going to add in a gallery banner. So that's the part that controls the color uh, and the theme that's used uh, when it's published to the marketplace. So I've done that. And there's some other ones that we can stub out here in terms of um, <clears throat> uh, where people can find help. So an example of that would be these properties. So if I bring these over, so this is all to do with this. Um, so what these URLs are, are the ones that appear here in the resources section. So if you want to be able to link to your 
uh, issues repository or your uh, homepage where there's more information, uh, you can do that through the package.json file. So uh, I'm just going to uh, copy that from here. So let's just rename or remove these ones. So this is going to be clip image and then we'll do the same for here. Clip image and then this one clip image. We did that. Okay. Uh, the other things that I want to do just now is I'm going to for the sake of me knowing what's going on, I'm going to change that to be 1 .0, 0 0.1.0. That's going to be the first version that we're ultimately going to uh, release. So I'm going to change the display name away from there. I'm going to call this clip image. Image. There we go. And that's the extension, the description that we said before. And for now, I think that's the only thing that I want to do in here. So now that we have this, we need to fix up a few things from a Git perspective. Uh, so right now I've got over uh, 2000 changes here. That's because as far as this Git repository is concerned, uh, I'm not ignoring the files I need to ignore. Okay. So what I'm going to do for that is I need to add a new git ignore file that will control uh, what is and isn't checked into my repository. So I could uh, create that from scratch, but instead I'm going to use that thing that I talked about, which was that CICD uh, extension that I created. So this is where my kind of default files come from. So uh, in this example, I want to download a git ignore file. So this is my down. This is my Templated. This is my Git ignore file. This is the one that I typically use. So it has all of the um, known things that need to get uh, ignored as part of uh, the, the type of projects that I work on. Okay. So uh, you know, straight away you can see that I've gone from uh, two thousand plus uh, changes that need to get committed uh, to just twenty three. So those twenty three are most likely the ones that I actually want to add into. Um, my repository. Let's just have a quick sanity check. Uh, source test uh, and out. So we don't necessarily want the out folder. So that's one thing that we do need to add into our uh, git ignore file. So that should be as simple as just adding. Um, that should be as simple as just adding out into it. So it is. So let's just go down to the bottom of this file. And we'll add in a section that is VS Code specific. So let's just add in VS Code. And then we'll just add in the folder called out. So we'll see that number drop again, hopefully at 17. And for now, let's have a quick sanity check again. We've got to get ignore, VS Code ignore, change log, readme, package JSON, blocks. We probably don't necessarily need that one. What's in the folder? We can probably delete that file. Uh, discard changes. We don't need that one. And then extensions.json. Where is it? Here? That's in VS Code. That's just the recommended uh, plugins that come with it. So that's fine. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, the one thing I didn't do before was. I didn't create an issue to go with this. So I'm going to create an issue. I'm a little bit uh, pedantic about um, having an issue in my repository that maps to what I'm actually doing. So I'm going to create a new issue that is uh, create scaffolded scaffolded project create scaffolded project for new extension using uh, yo generator for VS Code. Okay, so that's kind of what we want to do. And I'm going to um, labels, we'll come back to actually, that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, I will assign it to a milestone because that's going to be the first release. So I'm going to create a milestone, I'm going to assign myself, and I'm going to submit new issue. So with that in play, I could then uh, create a commit message that maps to that issue just using the nomenclature that GitHub uses, which is just to use uh, gh 
and then the number of the issue, uh, and I'm just going to say added uh, scaffolded scaffolded project from you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and commit that, and that's just Visual Studio Code telling me that I haven't added anything to the staging area, but I'm going to say go ahead and do that anyway. And then from there, I should be able to go here and go get push. Right. So, now that I've done that, if I go back to my GitHub repository and I look at code, then I have a bunch of stuff. Right? Now, I mentioned that I'm a little bit pedantic about uh, GitHub issues and having those linked issues and all that sort of stuff, and I totally am. Uh, I'm even more pedantic about um, continuous integration and having knowing that what I've added hasn't broken something uh, or it, it has is no longer working or it doesn't function anymore. So with that in mind, I pretty much immediately want to set up a uh, continuous integration build of this thing so I can verify that things are working the way I expected to. So the default uh, system that I use for doing that is a system called AppFair. So I'm going to go over here to appfair.com and I'm going to create a new build or a new project that will run that build. So I'm going to try and get signed in here with my GitHub account, which will give me access to... Uh, so you'll see here that there's a project in here for Chocolate VS Code, all the, the extensions that I've already got. So I'm going to go ahead and say create new project. And then in there, I am going to hook up that new extension GitHub project to, to, to run the build, right? So that should, that bear should give me a list of all the projects that I have. And if I search in here for uh, clip image VS code, it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and add that. So that will add a new project into AppBear, right? So now it's done a handshake between GitHub and AppBear. And any time a new commit is submitted to the GitHub repository, it will trigger a build in uh, AppBear and it will run the build, right? Now, if I do that, right now that's that, that's not going to go very well <laughs> for lots of reasons um mainly because uh i haven't configured anything in appvair so um appvair will attempt to do some clever stuff and it'll try and find something that it can build um it might try and identify that for example it's a .NET project and it might look to see if there's a solution file that it can build um but in this instance i'm attempting to build uh um, a Visual Studio Code extension, and it needs some kind of specific tools in order for that to to, to work. So that build just failed. It just straight up went, no, nah, I'm not. You're not getting to play. So what I need to do is I need to tell AppVar how it can run the build, right? So for those of you that don't know, uh, I am a maintainer of a project called Cake. And Cake is a C sharp build automation tool that kind of helps with orchestrating uh, builds. Now, it can be used for lots of things. Um, predominantly, people would use it for running building .NET projects and uh, running .NET Core Restore and .NET Core Build, all these things. But it can absolutely do anything that you wanted to. Now, because I use Cake all the time and I know how it functions, I have uh, an extent. Uh, I have a. Uh, I have a pre-canned recipe, as it's called, for building a VS Code extension. So that's absolutely what I'm going to use here, right? So if I go up to my command palette and I say "cake recipe," then you'll see here that there are two available recipes within my cake recipe extension for Visual Studio Code. One is for doing a cake recipe project. So cake recipe is when you're doing uh, a .NET project. But there's another one here that is specifically for this thing called Cake VS Code Recipe. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, it, it there's no magic. I mean, literally all it's doing is doing what you would ultimately do um, to run the build um, in any other sort of language and, or scripting tool that you chose to do. It needs to run an npm install. It needs to run the VSC, uh, VSCE command line, which will generate the, the package. Oh, I've bundled all of that up into this thing that I've called this cake vs code recipe, right? So if I run that, 
it's going to ask me for the name of the build script that I want to use. So I'm going to say uh, recipe.cake. Uh, and then what it's going to want is a couple of pieces of information that it can use to uh, fill in the values that it needs to fill in. So in this case, it's asking me for a GitHub uh, owner or organization. So right now, uh, the project I want to build is in the get13 uh, GitHub organization or profile. I'm going to give it that. And the name that we gave it was clip image VS uh, code. Uh, so I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to say that. So what that's going to stub out for me is uh, a recipe.cake file. So this uh, recipe.cake file is all that I need to run the, the build that I spoke about, right? So right now, uh, I'm going to change this slightly. Um, so this here, this URL that's using at the top here is pulling um, the VS Code recipe from uh, my get feed which is where it's ultimately hosted, but it's also now available on NuGet.org, I think. I think I pushed it to NuGet. So let's just check that it's actually up there. Fairly sure it is. So if I do cake.vscode.recipe, then I think it's there. Yes, it is. So I can use it from NuGet rather than from, uh, from there. So if I go back to here and I say uh, load, Cake load you get. So that's going to be from there. And we'll do cake.vscode.recipe. And the version number is 0 0.1.0. So I can get rid of that one. Everything else being the same. So the other thing that I'm going to need, because I'm running a, now a cake build, uh, I need what's known as the cake bootstrappers. So I can say install a bootstrapper. Uh, and I can call that one. I'm going to install the PowerShell Bootstrapper, which is the one that I'm going to use on Windows. But I can also install uh, a Bash or a Shell Bootstrapper that I can use when I'm on my Mac. So the only thing I'm going to need to change in here is, by default, that Bootstrapper is going to look for a build.cake file. But instead, I'm going to give it the recipe.cake file that I created. And I'm going to change that in my Bootstrapper here as well. And I'm going to call that the recipe.cake as well. Okay, so now that I've done those two things, if I go over here and I attempt to run that build file, so that build.ps1, it should now, in theory, assuming it all works, is it should now complete the build process. So that build process is going to be what I said. It's going to be, it's going to run npm and it's going to look at the package.json file and it's going to ensure that all of the uh, development dependencies and the project dependencies are available in my node modules folder. It's going to run uh, the VSCE tool, which is what uh, Visual Studio Code uses under the hood to actually package up the extension. And then it's going to do all of those things and it's going to generate a v6 file. And that v6 file is what I can then use to install the extension uh, on an actual Visual Studio Code instance. Now that didn't work. Ah, but I don't know why that didn't work. Okay, so I'm not going to get into that because that's not really important for what we're discussing here today. But what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to install a configuration file. And in that configuration file, I'm going to need to set this to be true. And then if I run that build again, it should work. Okay, so we're not, don't worry about that part. That's, that's not important for what we're discussing today. Um, if you're curious about any of that, feel free to shout out in the uh, the chat and we can discuss it further, but it's not important. So it's going to run npm install, it's going to run the VSCE uh, utility tool to build the extension, and I'm going to get a v6 file. And I can take that v6 file and I could give it to someone, and that someone would then be able to test out that extension to make sure it's working. Uh, or I could take that v6 file and load it into another instance of Visual Studio Code on my machine. So rather than using the extension development host, I could use um, the v6 file to do what it needed to do. Missing publisher name. That's unexpected. Um, error, package extension. Love the ASCII art. Indeed. Yeah. You, you, you can't beat a little bit of ASCII art uh, in the output. Uh, so <laughs> baked into this recipe, is uh, a tool called Figlet, 
and Figlet outputs ASCII art uh, to the terminal. Because why not? Um, missing missing publisher name. Have I missed something in the package.json file? I think I maybe missed something in the package.json file. Publisher. I bet I've missed something from here. I have. I've missed out the publisher. I wonder why that wasn't included as part of the... I wonder why that wasn't included as part of the scaffolding. Let's put this in. So I'm going to put my... So my publisher on... Um, the marketplace, this is GEP13, uh, as you might have been able to guess. Uh, GEP13 pretty much everywhere uh, on the internet. So if I put that into my package.json file and I attempt to run that build again, what's going to happen there? Let's find out. How do we take the time? 10 o'clock. It's not too bad. So there's the ASCII art again. Look at that. Um, so now with that in play, so so the one thing about the cake build uh, is that it does the same thing over and over again, but it does it in a repeatable, uh, reliable, and maintainable way. So it's always going to attempt to do the things uh, that it needs to do to get the build to work. Okay. So with there we go. Okay, that's better. That's better. So now it's running um, TSC. Make sure to edit the README file before we publish your extension. Error. Oh, I wonder if it's looking at the README file to I wonder if it doesn't like all of this default content that's in here I wonder I bet that's what it is I bet that's what it is okay so let me go over here and let me borrow a readme from another extension that I have and we can just edit it to make it do what we need so let's just copy this and yeah you do have to love linting don't you because it's trying really hard to help us but it wasn't necessarily expected so i'm going to change that to be the clip image visual studio code extension this is studio brings support for let's just put in clip image why not i can always come back to this later um so clip Let's, oh no, we'll need that. So that's clip image VS code to the studio code. So table of contents. What is clip image? Um, what is clip image? Kind of like with the chocolate extension. Indeed. Um, so for those of you who don't know what Matthias is referring to in the chat there, um, in the stream that we did last week, we uh, looked at how we can add in uh, linting or language support into the chocolate extension for Visual Studio Code, which allows the um, interrogation of the chocolate new spec file and using the language server protocol to... Uh, to indicate when there are errors in that new spec file so you'll get so what you'll see here for example this green squiggly that i've got under there that's a um, spell check extension that i have installed that is telling me that i've spelled something wrong so we can get that same functionality for uh, chocolate new spec file to indicate that there's something wrong so all of those things i can leave as they were so this is going to be what is clip image uh, I'm gonna leap. I'm gonna take that out. I'll fill that in later for more information about. You know what? Let's just put that in. Provide more details here. Uh, commands. We are gonna have a command. So we, because I'm gonna to want to have a command that is going to grab the contents of my clipboard and make it available. So I don't know what that's going to be called yet, but we'll just put in to do here and we'll remove the other ones because there's likely only going to be one. Uh, the resource, I need to put in a... Typically what I do for my extensions is um, 
the YouTube, normally part of the extensions that I create, I have a very short kind of YouTube video that says what's available on this new release. So every time I get making a new release, I'll create a short video and then it's uh, people can review it. So I'll create a, I will be creating a YouTube playlist that will have uh, that available. Ultimately, this is going to be the same. Clip image VS Code and then documentation. There will be a documentation site available for it, so that will be the same as well. It'll just be on Clip image and contributing. If you would like to see any features added for this VS Code extension, feel free to raise an issue. Yes, that's going to be absolutely true of this thing as well. So let's just do clip image again. And you can join the getter chat. Oh, that's the same. Okay, so I'm going to save that and I'm going to try and build that extension one more time. And hopefully it's not going to tell me that um, I don't have an error there. So let's see if that works. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, hello, Patrick. Uh, Mr. Patrick Svensson has joined the chat as well. Hello. Um, and Matthias has made a comment here. So the recipe, so recipe gave you all the build steps and versioning for free. Yes, that's the idea. Um, so the VS Code, oh, sorry, the Cake VS Code recipe includes all the things that I need to do as part of uh, my build process. So that includes uh, creating a version number, uh, adding a version number, um, doing the npm install, doing the uh, VSC uh, execution, uh, uploading artifacts to up there. Um, when I do a release, it'll automatically send uh, a, a, a tweet to indicate that something's happened. Um, it'll send a message to the Gitter room I've got for my uh, kind of open source uh, stuff. Uh, all that stuff that is all, needs to be done, but it, it, it's not boring's the wrong term. But you know what I mean. It's all the stuff that you don't necessarily uh, want to have to do over and over and over again. The idea behind the recipe is that it'll take care of all that for us. So you'll see what it did here is it, it's done all of those things. It, it's done a package extension, uh, which is the running of the VSCE command line. Uh, it's done a clean step, and that clean step is um, uh, just tidying up the build artifacts folders. Uh, it's installing VSC because it might not be installed. It's installing TypeScript because, again, it might not be installed. Uh, there is an assumption, there's an inherent assumption in the uh, recipe that you have NPM installed. Uh, if you don't have npm installed, you probably won't get very far in creating the extension in the first place. So there is an assumption that that part's done. Um, so now, if I go back to Visual Studio Code, I should hopefully be able to start um, doing stuff, right? So on AppFair, that is. So what we've done is we've modified the README so I can get that checked in. Uh, so that's actually, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back over here. And I'm going to say um, add app there build using cake.vscode.recipe. I'm going to assign that to myself and I'm going to add that into the milestone. And I'm going to say submit new issue because this is what we've just been working on. So we added a couple of bootstrappers, we added cake.config file, um, we added publisher, we definitely did do that. Um, we changed the version number, we did that, uh, we added the recipe.cake file, and we added a packages.config file. So that packages.config file came for the ride. Um, and as Maurice is pointing out in the chat room, uh, don't you need an appfair.yaml file? You absolutely do need that. Um, so that's why I go to CI, that's why I go to my CI CD and I say, give me an appfair.yaml file. So that's going to uh, add an appfair.yaml file there. And it's going to have everything I need. So it's pre-configured for doing all the stuff that I want to do. Um, so that's all I need. So with that file in place, I can now do gh2 and say added uh, appfair. Build. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that and say yes, and I'm going to go ahead and push that. 
So with that in play, if I go back to app there and look at my here, then we should the webhook has come from GitHub to AppVare, AppVare has triggered a build, and then AppVare is then going to use that AppVare.yaml file that I added, and it's going to run the build on AppVare. So with that, if that works, let's let's find out, shall we? So a couple of things to say about AppVare is uh, AppVare, the build image that I'm using already has a node and npm installed so i didn't need to do that as part of my build because the app bear build image already has that so we'll see the same ascii art coming through um we shall see the same npm install step running so it's downloading all of the uh, packages uh, that are needed within that package.json file it's then installing uh, typescript so the typescript compiler is there to compile all of my code into the extension uh, it's installing VSCE, which is the utility that does everything. Um, that red text there is very much known about. It's not an error. It's it's honestly not. Um, NP or or rather npm when it runs output things to the uh, standard error and app there shows it as red text. So this text here absolutely is fine this red text here not so much um that oh right let me explain a little bit about what's going on here so if i go to chocolatey.org so full disclaimer i work for chocolatey and pretty much everything i do i do involves chocolatey because i find it very useful as a utility tool uh if i go up here and i look for ci cd uh let's actually find one i can spell uh, if i look for the vs code extension for cake recipe then i've actually submitted that as a chocolatey package now you might be wondering why why would i do that why would i do that well the answer is pretty clear in my head anyway right so if i'm installing uh if i'm bringing up a new machine then i want to install all the things that i want to install on that machine right now if i actually show you this so uh, let's go over here let's go github.com get 13 live stream so this is the uh, repository that i use for creating this vm the vm that i'm running on all this code on is generated from this live streams repository so if i go in here and look at the scripts that are being executed then you'll see that i have one called install required applications so this is using chocolatey to install all of the applications that i want on this machine and you'll see that one of those or some of those are choco install visual studio uh, choco install cicd assets vs code so it's installing that extension as part of the provisioning of this vm now arguably i could have done that as part of um i could have run the the code executable directly to do that but this to me is a, 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 using the package manager for what it's for what it's intended for right so i have submitted a, 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 every time i release a new version of an extension i publish it to the um, gallery the the visual studio code marketplace um, but i also submit it to chocolate.org and that uh, chocolatey package includes the v6 file that's generated so that v6 file is what i'm ultimately generating on my machine um, and when the, that bear build runs now the reason that the build failed is because currently the vs code uh, no i'm getting my terminology currently the uh, cake.vs code recipe file is expecting there to be a chocolatey new spec file to run the build to, for it to actually build that package uh i don't have one of those yet so this is a bug in uh cake vs code recipe so i'm going to go ahead and um create an issue for that because that's broken uh so i'm going to do that while i remember about it so again we're going a little bit off piece here but um, I think it needs to be done. Um, 
So let's go over here and grab that link. Uh, don't create or don't attempt to create Choco package when there is no new spec file. Otherwise, otherwise, bad things happen. I'm going to paste. That's not what I want. I wanted to go here and I wanted to say copy and I'm going to say paste. So that's very much a bug. That is going to need to go out in the next release. So 020. And I'm going to create and I'm going to assign that to me. Otherwise, it probably won't get done. Okay, so with that in play, I need to fix this bug because I'm not going to get a build working unless I have that. So, if I go back to here and look at what I need to do. Okay, so now let's go here. Oh no, that's related to this one. So that's the same issue really. So what I need to do because uh, ultimately I want to do this because for this extension I want to produce it as a chocolate package as well. So I'm going to create a new folder here called chocolatey and into that I'm going to create another new folder called tools and into here I'm going to create a new file and that new file is going to be called clip image VS code dot new spec and into there I am going to add something. So again this is not really strictly required for what we're talking about but I mean it's part of the process that I follow so I'm just going to get this added in here. This extension brings support for clip image to Visual Studio Code I'm going to say clip image extension for Visual Studio Code. What else do I need to put in here? I'm going to give it a name that is not CICD assets. Clip image and then CICD wants to be changed here to be clip image. I'm sure there's a quicker way of doing this, but we're going to run with it now that I've started. Clip image. Um, that's going to be broken, but let's not play about that just now. I'll need to find out what that is. Icon URL. Let's just comment it out just now. We're in 2019 now, aren't we? So that's going to be a 9 rather than an 8. License URL is going to be the same but in a different repository because both extensions are released under MIT. Project source URL is going to be clip image. Bug tracker URL is going to be the same. And then tags are going to be clip image VS code. VS code extension. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then what I'm going to need is couple of additional files into the tools folder. That's going to get very boring very quick because there's a lot of copy and paste in there. But let's go for it. Um, I'm going to grab this new file into here called that. And into there, I'm going to call that. So these are just some helper scripts that will actually install the VS Code extension. Don't forget your releases. Yeah, I'm not too fussed about the release notes at the minute, uh, Maurice. The um, 
the I will need them ultimately, yes, but um I no such file new file oh, let me see. Um, I'm not too fussed about the release notes. I mean, I haven't actually finished the extension, so I'm not. Um, well, I'm not at a point where I can actually do that yet. I think the link. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, hold on. Let me let me check that. I see what you're saying. I thought you. I I thought you meant I hadn't filled out the um, release notes. But yeah, you're probably right. So let's go ahead and just get these files stubbed out. Copy. Paste. Let's go to the start as well. Uh, new spec file. Do you think that there's a mention in the release notes? Uh, you are absolutely correct, Maurice. Let's put this in here as click image. Save that again. And then let's get these. So these helper files, like I say, are just solely about getting VS Code extension installed via chocolatey. So this is not strictly needed, um, but hey, that's where we're that's where we're going. So let's go ahead and grab this and put it into here. This is going to have some verbiage that I need to change. CI, CD. Change this to be. All these programs what we called it, clip image, and then clip image, good. And then over here, and the chocolate install file, I'm going to copy this and paste this in here. That's going to want to be changed to be clip image. And there are no other ones, and then there's an uninstall script, and that's the last one. And at that point, we should then have something that will build on app pair. And at that point, we can then actually start implementing the code that we're interested in. So the final one over here is clip image VS code. Okay, so this was an GH2. Uh, it's broken. Oh, yeah, no. Got an X in there. Save. Yes. And then git push. So, again, that git push is going into uh, GitHub. That will trigger a webhook to AppVare. AppVare will then pick that up and it should attempt to run the build again. So there we go, fix broken build and app there. And hopefully we should get some red, no, so we should still get some red text in the output. That red text is going to be the NPM writing directly to the standard error output as it did before. And then it should get past the, the other step, which is the creation of the chocolate package. So let's see if that worked. Who thinks it's going to work? We'll have a vote. So here's the ASCII art coming through. It will then do an npm install. It will uh, install the utility tools. Uh, oh, Patrick, we've got at least one vote for you thinking it's going to work. So let's 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 wait and see, shall we? npm install. It's then installing TypeScript. It's installing VSE. So the one thing to mention about AppBear is um, you get a new build image every time you run a build. Um, so anything that you installed on it the first time round, you need to do it again because it's not going to be there. It's, it's a completely different machine. It's spun up a different VM instance or uh, however they, uh, their, function, their, their, function, their backend is implemented. So it, it's, it's a new one. It needs to be done again and again. Um, so it did. Oh, look, it, it did it. Hey, so it's created the chocolate package and now it's uploading artifacts into AppVare and then the build is finished, right? So if we go back up to here, we should now have some artifacts. 
and those artifacts are the v6 file so that's the v it's 50 megabytes 50 megabytes no that's wrong it shouldn't be 50 megabytes why would it be 50 megabytes that's ridiculous I'm going to guess that that v6 file has stuff in it that we don't want to be in there. Um, I wonder. Let's just have a quick sanity check on the size of the v6 file for some of my other extensions, because it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that big. Um, let's have a look. At, this is probably the biggest extension that I have. Look at the artifacts for it. Yeah, it's 212 kilobytes. Mm. That's 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 wrong. Um, I think I know what's going on there. Um, one of the so a file in here called the VS Code Ignore, which is this one, and this is what it will look at or what it knows it needs to not include in the V6 package. So right now we're telling it to not include things in VS Code, VS Code test, out test. It's not got this node modules folder. So I suspect that that v6 file is including the node modules folder. So let's see how big that node modules folder is. That node modules folder is something like 54 megabytes in size. So yes, I absolutely think that is exactly what the problem is. So let's go over here and include a couple of extra things into that um, VS Code Ignore file. Um, okay, ignore. We actually deleted that file, so we're not we don't need that one anymore because it's not there. Yeah. Let's add in some additional things here. So that's, we don't want to include to, the tools folder. This one here is one that's generated by Cake. So we don't want that to be included. Um, build, I don't think we need build anymore. Uh, build artifacts is the folder that's created by um, the recipe. So we definitely don't want to include those. And we also don't want to include uh, the chocolate folder. So if I do that, let's have a quick sanity check before we push that onto uh, AppVare again. So currently, this v6 file is the one that I've built locally is 34 megabytes. But if I build it again, um, I think that will change. So let's do the build locally again before we push to AppVare. And see what happens. So that v6 file that's there should go away because the first thing that will ha one of the first things that will happen is the clean step, and that clean step is to remove the generated artifacts from the previous build. So what we should see uh, once that clean step happens, will that v6 file will go away? It will then regenerate that v6 file with the current code that we have. So v6 file went away, and then it's going to repackage that extension. And now, 45 kilobytes. Okay, so that's much better. Okay, so now we're going to say gh2 added additional ignores for e6 file. Uh, so the comment from uh, Matthias there is that, uh, yes, I can run the same builds. So one of the functionalities of Cake is, um, or one of the benefits of Cake, is that I can run the same build steps locally on my machine rather than having to push the CI system. So it's the exact same build process that I run locally um, that I'm running on app there. Um, so did I push that? I didn't push that yet, did I? No, I haven't. I haven't. I'm actually I'm I'm looking for that webhook to come from GitHub, but I haven't actually pushed it yet. So now if I do that and I look at the history, now we'll see that generated v6 file should only be 
it should be it should pale in comparison to the size of the one that was there before. So with that done, I can now start building stuff uh, in the knowledge that any code that I check into uh, source control will get built. And then as a result of that, I can ensure that I haven't broken anything as part of my build process. So let's let that finish. And then we will close out that loop by taking the uh, v6 file from the artifacts tab, uh, download it, and I'm going to load it into my Visual Studio Code instance just to see that it's all working. So let's just let that run through. Uh, another comment there uh, regarding Poshkit. Um, I do need Poshkit installed. Um, so uh, Poshkit is an extension for PowerShell that makes things light up in the console here in terms of how many um, code changes I have, um, how many uh, commits I'm ahead locally compared to the uh, the origin and vice versa. Um, the reason I don't have it is literally just before um, this uh, stream went live, I rebuilt this Vagrant VM, um, and in order to put Poshkit into there, I would have needed to download my profile from a uh, private repository that I have because it's called setup that I need. Um, all of those things I didn't have a chance to do because after rebuilding my VM, Windows 10 on my host machine decided that it wanted to install an update. So I didn't have time to put Poshkit back onto this VM uh, in order to make everything work. So normally at my terminal, I would have uh, Poshkit installed and it would be showing me everything that I uh, want to see, but uh, it's not there. So yeah. Uh, so now that that build's finished, uh, I've now got an artifact, and that artifact is much better in terms of size. So I'm going to go ahead and download that v6 file into my documents folder. And if I get a new code instance, so I can hopefully do that from here. No, it's not going to let me. So let's go here and cd into ctemp, and then code into there. And then cd back to where I was because I need it, so cd github uh, get 13 and then clip image. Okay, so in this second VS Code instance, so if I go over to here to the extensions tab, then we should be able to see the ones that are installed. So show installed extensions. So I've got some extensions installed already, and that's kind of what I've been using to pull down some of the files that I'm interested in. Um, but there's no mention here of the uh, clip image extension because we obviously haven't installed it. But up here, uh, then one of the things that I can do is install from v6. So this is where the testing comes into play. So I haven't pushed yet to the marketplace, but I can use uh, this function to install from a v6 file. So if I go and browse to my downloads, which is where I put that v6 file that was generated at there, if I go ahead and click install, it's installing the clip image VS Code as extension, and that's now been completed. So if I go back over here and remove this, then we should hopefully be able to see the clip image extension over here. There we go. Um, clip image uh, now has the icon, the icon that we I bought from the Nine project, and it's got the contents of the readme that needs to be uh, stubbed out with additional information. And in theory, if I uh, pr press F1, then there's the hello world, and then there's the hello get13 stream. So we have a functioning uh, VS Code extension, um, and that VS Code extension is ready to be extended to provide some additional functionality. And the build and app fair will run every time a commit gets changed, uh, pushed into it. So I think we're at a point where we can actually start um, doing some coding now. Uh, just run blah once you are done. Yes and no, uh, Maurice. Um, the I have a custom uh, profile that does some additional things to my posh git uh, instance to change the color and change the um, uh, text that's displayed, basically just to make it a little bit prettier. Uh, I have that stored in a private GitHub repository that has my uh, PowerShell profile that I would download from there and put into play. Um, 
I can't do that as part of the creation of the VM because that would mean putting credentials and things into the Vagrant image that I don't necessarily want to do. Um, so long story short, uh, I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, but that is ultimately what you would do, yes. And that's what I would run as part of... Um, that's what I do within the profile, but I do some additional stuff as well. Okay, so when I was putting some thought into this extension and what I wanted it to do, I did go to see if there was any existing extensions that would help me in what I needed to do. So the if I go up to the Visual Studio Code Marketplace here and I do a search for image, then there are a lot of them. But there are ones that do at least part of what I want to do. So I, I believe it was this one, paste image. So this paste image extension allows you to paste image directly from the clipboard to markdown or other file. So this does part of what I want to do. So if we look at the GIF that's happening here, I don't know how well that's going to come through in the video, but it allowed the creation of a... Um, it, it, it essentially did a screenshot of something and then it pasted it in, in markdown format but it was a local file so it was a local file that got added into the um, solution explorer and then the markdown format referenced that file so that's a that's a first step we could make use of that so if we were to go over to this repository and have a look at what it's doing then um oh that's unfortunate that extension doesn't have a license file associated with it. So I can't necessarily borrow that code because um, there's not an implied, li uh, there's not an implied uh, license file there. So I might need to reach out to that uh, maintainer to see what's going on there. But there are a couple of years that there was none that did exactly what I wanted to do. So for example, this uh, paste image FTP does the same thing, but it uploads it to an, uh, an FTP location. Um, let's just see what this one is licensed under. Let's have a look. Oh, he's forked it from there. Mm, that's even more interesting. Mm, okay, we're going to come back to that. And then the other part of the, uh, the other side of the equation was that um, we wanted to upload to Azure. So if we look at Azure Storage, then there is an extension that allows populating uh, Azure with some um, with some content so that one for example is licensed on the MIT so I can uh, I mean it's not required but as long as I attribute it correctly or I, I, I don't even need to attribute it correctly but I could borrow the code from here which is to take the the, the bytes the, the the bytes of the image that I want to upload and to show how it can go into uh, Azure storage so a combination of uh, an image extension that already exists and the Azure storage extension will allow me to do what I want to do, which is to put those two things together so that when I um, when I take a screenshot, I will then be able to uh, upload that to Azure storage. I will then be able to get a URL back and that URL can then be put into um, put into the the markdown of the file that I'm working on. Okay. So the first thing that I want to look at is when do I want these things to occur? Now the command that I'm interested in is only really going to apply when I am uh, looking at markdown files because I mean if I don't have a markdown file open in my repository uh, or, or in my workspace then I can't that's all I, I wanted to go into a markdown file so I want to look at how I can activate my extension uh, only when uh, there are markdown files in the repository or when only when there are markdown files in the workspace okay so that's the first thing we're going to look at so uh, in order to look at that, 
I go over here and look at chop. No. Go up to the US code and look at the package.json file here as an example. Then, yeah, that's what we want to do. So we want our extension to be activated. So again, in the package.country file, so right now there is a command, and that command is when um, the specific command palette is activated. But we also maybe want to do stuff when our workspace contains star 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 dot md files. So if we open a workspace that has markdown files contained within it, then we want our extension to be um, activated. And we also want it to be activated when we call a command that we said we were going to call something. And Maurice had a suggestion as to what that was. So let's scroll back up in the chat window just to see what that suggestion was from Maurice because I quite liked it. So where was that? That was a past clipping, maybe Maurice clipping upload. So, um, in here we will call this clip image dot, and then what we want to do. So, what the when that command is activated, we want it to do stuff, and that stuff is to let's say upload. To measure. Okay, so that command here is then going to be called clip image upload to Azure. And then in the title of that command, we'll call that as clip. Whatever you put into this title is what you have to search for in the command palette. So we're going to call it clip image and then upload. Uh, Board, upload clipboard contents to Azure Storage. We'll call it that. Okay. And then in order for that to flow through, we need to modify the extension.js file. So the extension.js file here is, well, that's actually wrong. Oh no, that's no. I'm confusing myself here. So my my thought process there was that this uh, entry point is looking for extension.js, but what we have is an extension.ts. But that's absolutely correct. So one of the things, if we look in the out folder, then we have actually an extension.js file. So that's what the TypeScript compiler is doing for us. It's taking the ts file, the TypeScript file, and it's compiling it to JavaScript. Um, so the fact that the entry point is out extension.js is absolutely correct. So in here, I'll make this slightly smaller. Hopefully that's still coming through uh, okay on the video. Um, what have we got in here? Use console out. So let's I mean, type some of this up. Um, don't necessarily want to do a console.log. Um, I'm going to delete those. Delete some of these. Comments here. Fine. The code you place here will be executed every time the command is executed. That's fine. And that's fine. Okay. So we change this to be clip image dot upload to Azure. I think that's what I called it. Upload to Azure. Upload to Azure. So we can remove that. Okay, and then all we were doing there was showing an information image. So let's remove that and let's see what we want to do. Now, one of the things that we want to do is we want to get some input from the user. And that input is going to be the alt text for the image that's getting added to the markdown file. Um, so what I mean by that is um, the alt tag is the one that will be rendered into HTML that's actually uh, describes what that image contains. Okay, so the way that we're going to do that is 
there are some additional helpers that we can use. So right now, when we run that command, I want to get the alt text. So I can use a input dialog. So let's say um, that we'll need to change, but let's let's work through this. Um, let's just say let um, alt text equals is is going to be equal to. And I'm going to await a window dot show input box, and that show input box is going to take in a. That's not what I want it to do. Okay, so this is where we're going to have to. So, TypeScript. Well, well let's go back to that. JavaScript has the concept of a promise. And JavaScript out of the box uh, expects that um, you, the promise will be returned, and then then you do something. So normally you would have a you call a function, and then you have a then function, and then in that then function, it's what gets called back when the the promise has been fulfilled. Now um, in TypeScript, it brought along the concept of uh, async and await. Uh, which is similar to the C sharp code. So I've tried to use a wait keyword here to um, directly get the response from the show input box rather than having to use a promise. But this await keyword is actually saying there's an error. So it's saying await expression is only allowed within an async function. So this register command functions is actually this one. Um, so it's currently not using the async operator. So I need to go and change that. So if I go up here and change this to be async, then this will work. And if I go back up to here and put this in, then I should hopefully get a different. So rather than asking for a, rather than asking for the um, cancellation token that it was asking for before, it's now asking for the additional the, the the actual things i can provide so the placeholder here is what will uh, come in in the show input box when it is displayed to the user so i'm going to put in here uh, uh, alt text to display to display for image and then by default its value is going to be I don't have anything in it. Um, and then that alt text is what I'm going to get back from that. So then as a test, then we can say window.show information message and we'll just output the alt text just to see if that's working the way we want it to. And why is that? Uh, I'll mix it. So this is TypeScript kicking into play. So this information message wants it to be a string or a string array. This is returning a anything. So I need to be a little bit more specific about what I'm returning there. So let project name, can I just simply say string here? Is that what I need to do? Um, how do I verify that that's a string? I'm going to think about this. Show input box is returning either a string or an undefined. Okay, I see. So uh, I think what we need then here is just a test. If alt text has something, anything, then it's not null. And then we'll just output it. So this is a little bit of a cheat, but this is just to prove that things are working. 
So if I go ahead and run that, then we'll get the extension development host. And I can run F1. And I can say a search for clip image. So clip image then has the upload clipboard contents to Azure Storage. If I go ahead and hit enter there, it will then prompt me for uh, some stuff. So again, we'll just say get 13 stream and then hit enter. And then I'm showing my message window. So that's the start. So that's me um, taking the, uh, uh, the alt text and putting it onto the page or putting it into the, the show message window. So now what we want to look into before we even start thinking about um, before we even start thinking about uh, actually grabbing the clipboard contents and uploading to Azure, um, let's just work on getting it into the Markdown file. So um, let's think about how we can do that. Um, so ultimately what we want to do is we want to look for the currently open document and then we want to be able to write something into that currently open document. So that I've definitely done before in one of the extensions that I have worked on. So let's just see if we can figure out how to do that. Um, so let's actually just do this over here so we can see github.com cake build cake build cake vs code so the cake vs code extension does something similar so if we look in here and look at add package add tool command then right lines the file so where's that doing stuff right lines the file uh, another function called right lines the file so it's taking a file path and it is then mm, that's more interesting. It's not exactly what I thought it was going to be doing. I wonder, is that how I need to do it? Or, have a look. Yes, code, extension, right to currently open document. Let's see what that comes up with. So the way that the cake extension is working is it's writing, it's manipulating the file directly on the file system. Um, or is it workspace on top then document should resolve. Yeah, it seems to be reading the file from the file system with the right flag, and then it is. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to do that. I didn't think I would have to do that. Hmm. No, didn't necessarily want to have to do that at all. I'll think about this. Oh, oh man, it's getting quite late. <laughs> I, it, I think I've got to a natural stopping point because I'm going to need to dig around in this for a little bit, and it's also getting to ten at ten here. So let's have a quick recap of where we've got to. Um, so we have used the Yeoman generator to generate uh, the scaffolding template of a Visual Studio Code extension and we've made sure that that works and we've then added uh, an AppVar build to the extension so that we know that when we uh, submit uh, code changes to GitHub 
it will run the build to make sure that things are working and that will fail and it'll generate error messages and uh, email notifications and various things to say that the um, extension uh, is no longer building for whatever reason. Uh, we've then started looking into what we actually want to do. So uh, we know that there are some extensions out there uh, that we can build from. Uh, one being the uh, Azure Storage Explorer uh, that allows us to actually write a file into Azure Storage. And there's at least one extension uh, that I may be able to use uh, if I can get um, clarity on the, the license that it's uh, licensed under. Uh, we will look at that and see what it's doing um, to, to see what's going on. So in next week's stream, we will uh, dig into this some more and we will uh, further extend this extension to start looking uh, into, uh, uh, yeah, no, I see your messages. I'm, I'm literally just following, finishing up. So uh, uh, I don't think you're going to miss anything, but thank you for uh, coming along to the stream tonight. I appreciate it. Um, so that's that. So that, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to call it a night for tonight. Um, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to uh, reach out. Uh, as usual, uh, I kind of mentioned it uh, as part of the stream tonight already, but um, if you have any questions about anything that I'm doing uh, in this stream or any suggestions as about uh, things that should be included in this stream, then uh, feel free to go and have a look at the live streams repository that I have out there on GitHub. Uh, and there's an issues list here for uh, suggestions about uh, what should be covered. And one of them was actually um, creating a Visual Studio Code extension. So this was created by um, Kim, who is a user of, um, uh, what was I trying to say there? Um, uh, Kim actually suggested that we, or I show how to build an extension and including things like uh, debugging it and implementing unit tests. So all of those things will hopefully come out in the wash in terms of what we are trying to achieve here. Um, so this is the one that we're actually working on. Um, so if you have any suggestions as to um, uh, anything else that needs to be added, feel free to add an, extent, uh, an issue there and we can um, certainly look into that. Uh, I've just been a message from Maurice in the chat window which suggests that the extension I was looking at is actually licensed as MIT. So this extension and source node license under the MIT license. Well, that's perfect. But why is it not showing up as up here as MIT? Oh, because he hasn't included a license file uh, in the repository. Um, in which case, we will be making um, extensive use of this extension and using that as the basis for uh, some of the stuff that we're going to add into uh, the extension that we're creating. Uh, absolutely, I think I will uh, add a PR to add that license file into the repository because that would just make things uh, a lot simpler in terms of knowing. Because uh, if you look at another repository, like for example this one, then immediately this is lit up to say that it's an MIT project because of the presence of this license file in the root of the repository, which is here. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunate that he's not done that or he or she's not done that uh, on their one. But regardless, uh, thank you very much for that, Maurice. I would have uh, went looking for that after this, but uh, it's good to know that that's there. Uh, so for now, um, I hope it all made sense. Uh, I hope the end result is... Um, something that's of interest to you. The idea is to continue the development of this of this extension in next week's stream. So this today was this one. And then in theory, I'm going to extend that uh, into next week. Now, I have been contemplating adding another day for streaming into the week. So right now I'm streaming every Monday at 8 p.m. GMT. I'm thinking about also streaming on a Friday lunchtime. Uh, so Friday at uh, 12 p.m. GMT. Um, the idea being behind that, that uh, I don't necessarily have to ask for another evening off from the uh, wife and kids. 
uh, but it also means I can get a little bit more done uh, through the week. So rather than going for a walk at lunchtime, which is typically what I do, um, I will uh, be streaming on a Friday at lunchtime for uh, probably just, just under an hour. Under an hour. Um, so I may continue this effort this Friday uh, if I can uh, put all the pieces together. Uh, but if not, we will certainly be continuing uh, next Monday, the 25th. And then the following week, we will be looking at uh, Poshbot, uh, which is a uh, PowerShell-based chatbot system for uh, out of the box. It works for Slack and for Microsoft Teams. So it's written by a uh, person in the uh, PowerShell community called Brandon Olin. Uh, and we've recently been using uh, Poshbot at work. And uh, I want to look and see how we can start to create a plugin for Poshbot to have it starting to do stuff that we wanted to do. Uh, on top of what it does out of the box. Um, so I'm going to be looking and in, digging into that and showing how we can uh, start doing stuff in that regard. So that should hopefully be an interesting one. Uh, I'd encourage you to come along if you are interested. Uh, but for now, I'm going to sign off and I'm probably going to go install Windows 10 updates uh, on my machine again because, I mean, why not? It seems to be the, the what you do. Uh, especially just before streams are waiting to start. Uh, so I appreciate you coming along. Uh, for now, I will uh, say goodbye and hopefully talk to you all uh, next week. Thank you very much.